because I am going to be running the workshop this morning or this afternoon if you're in Bali. We've got another minute, so we'll just wait for others to arrive. You'll need a yoga mat and you might want to get a block or a brick or something like a book, something that will just support you in your practice if you don't do a lot of yoga. It's not going to be an advanced yoga practice, this is open to anyone, so there won't be anything that anyone can't do. But if you feel like you need some props or you want a support of a cushion, then just grab some now and then get yourself comfortable on your mat. So we'll wait uh, for another few moments while people arrive. And you can get yourself comfortable on your mat and I'll explain a bit more about what we're going to do in the workshop. So find a comfortable position lying down on your mat and just take the soles of the feet down to the ground. Bring the inner legs together. See if you can bring the soles of your feet a bit closer towards your sitting bones. And then take your arms out to the side. Allow yourself to settle here. So to explain what we're doing today, I am a shiatsu practitioner and a yoga teacher. Shiatsu is a Japanese form of acupressure massage that works on the same principles as traditional Chinese medicine. So we work with meridian pathways, these are the energy lines in the body, and with pressure points, much the same as acupuncture, but we don't use needles, we just use our hands, a bit less intrusive. So I'm also a yoga teacher, and it's my passion, my joy, to combine these Eastern traditions together, so yoga and traditional Chinese medicine, in order to help people, mostly in the West, where I live, in Portugal and the UK, uh, to restore the innate balance of their body's health. So we're going to learn a little bit about um, lung health today from the perspective of traditional Chinese medicine, from my practice of shiatsu. And uh, we're also just going to open up the physical pathway of the lung. So you don't have to believe in qi, you don't have to know much about traditional Eastern medicine to get the benefit of this practice. So if any of it feels a bit intangible or a bit out there, then just see what happens. See if you can let yourself kind of let go of uh, the questioning mind, have the beginner's mind, the open mind, and receive the benefits of the practice. So if you've just arrived, we're finding a yoga mat, maybe a book, maybe a pillow. You don't need any special props for this class. And then come to lie down. So the arms are wide, the soles of the feet are down on the ground, feet close towards the sitting bones, and then close the eyes. Tuning into how the breath is this morning, how your lungs are feeling. So the breath can be quite tricky to hear or feel unless there's something going wrong. So if you're lungs are feeling quite happy today, then maybe it's difficult to keep the mind focused on the breath, especially if you're practicing this later in the day and the mind is worrying. So if you want, you could take the hands onto a part of the body that's moving, maybe the upper chest or the belly, and feeling the physical movement of the breath breathing you. How does the breath feel? without having to try to change anything at all? Is it long or short? Does it feel stagnant? Can you feel the breath moving all the way down into the lower part of your torso? Or is the breath very high? Can you breathe through the nostrils? If you can, then try to breathe through the nostrils the whole time. The nose was designed for the breath. And it allows you to breathe in and out at the same pace. If you can't, then don't worry about it. Just breathe through the mouth. Eventually, after this practice, I believe that you will be able to breathe through the nostrils. And then taking your hands, interlacing them behind the back of the head, come into your sunbathing position, drop your elbows out, 
And then moving with the breath, we're going to breathe in and drop the knees over to one side, it doesn't matter which. And breathe out and bring the knees back to center. Really simple, but slow. See if you can allow this movement to be guided by your breath, dropping the knees over to the other side as you breathe in. And exhaling back to center. Close the eyes if it helps you to focus on the breath and allow the breath to guide the movement of your knees. Coming into a detoxifying twist, you could take the, the twist all the way along the length of the spine by turning the head to the opposite side of the knees as you twist. Bringing out any stagnant energy along the length of your spine. Deep breath in, you move the knees to the side. Deep breath out, you bring them back to center. That's it. We're working with detoxification today because we're working with the large intestine. Why are we working with the large intestine? In traditional Chinese medicine, the large intestine is the energetic pair of the lung, which sounds kind of strange for the Western mindset. But the reason for this is that the large intestine lets go of stagnation. It lets go of the old chi, while the lung brings in the new chi, the new vitality into the body. We can't take in new vitality new ideas, new people, if we don't let go of the old. And if we don't let go of the old, then we become stuck or stagnant and chi or energy can't move in the body. So we're working with twisting in order to start activating the large intestine, the digestive tract, and start releasing that stagnation so that we can breathe a bit deeper. So focusing in on the breath for the last few rounds, deep breath in as you twist to the side, deep breath out as you come back to center. Is one side more stuck than the other? Could you breathe a bit more space into that side? One more round on either side, make sure that you feel balanced. and then come back to center. Release the hands, take them down beside your sitting bones, palms facing down, and then step the feet about hip distance apart, but keep them close towards your sitting bone. Press your feet firmly into the ground, rooting them down into the earth, and then breathe in and lift your hips up to the sky. Exhale to roll the spine down, vertebra by vertebra, all the way back down to your base. And then again, inhaling to lift your hips up. And exhale to roll them down. Taking the arms with you this time. Inhale, lift the hips up, pressing into the feet. Take the hands all the way up and then back behind you, back of the hands to the ground. And as you exhale, rolling the spine down and taking the hands all the way back down to the ground. Moving with the rhythm, with the wave of your breath. Again, close the eyes if that helps you to focus inwards. You don't have to come so high that you feel any pain in the back. So if you have any lower back issues, then just come up less high, pressing into the feet, using the stability of the earth to protect your back body. Your glutes, your bum muscles are engaged here. That will give you a bit more lift. So three more rounds with as deep breath as we can. Making as much space through the front line of the body by drawing the knees forwards as you rise up. So as you lift, you're opening space around the chest, space around the intercostal muscles. You're drawing your knees towards the front. And as you exhale, you're feeling the support of the earth beneath you. This last round, we're gonna stay high. So inhaling, take the hands behind you, take the knees forwards. Lift the hips as high as they'll go. Take five deep breaths here. Staying still, but drawing the knees forwards and the fingertips away from you. So again, you're making space through the front line of your body. 
Taking the digestive tract above the heart is a great way to help with the flow of your digestive system. So if you have any problems with digestion, if you get very stuck, then this is a great way to help with the flow. Take one more breath, lift your hips a bit higher. And as you exhale, roll the spine and the hands back down to the ground. Take your thighs towards your belly and give yourself a squeeze, maybe rolling around on the hips in small circles. And then if it feels good, tuck the chin in, roll along the length of your spine, and if it doesn't feel good, then roll on to the side. Maybe rolling a few times to lift yourself up and then coming into a comfortable seat. So if cross leg isn't comfortable, then find another way you can sit up on a pillow. Let's open up the shoulder space so that we can breathe a bit deeper into the chest. We're going to find our first pressure point, which is heart one. So this is my right arm, but I'll show you the right arm the other way so that it's not confusing. So right in the depths of your armpit, there's kind of a hole Dig around for that hole with your thumb. And you should feel perhaps a bit of tenderness. So you know when you found a pressure point when it feels a bit tender. It's not a hard and fast rule, so you might not feel too much tenderness. But just press into the deepest crevice of your armpit that you can find. As you inhale, stretch that right hand all the way up. And as you exhale, take the hand to the opposite knee. So moving with the flow of your breath, you're inhaling to open, and you're exhaling to take the hand to the knee. So heart one is an amazing point that's connected to the heart organ rather than the lung, as you might imagine. And it's a point that's great for calming the mind, for clearing the shen, so the shen is the spirit of the heart. So if you're feeling anxious or nervous, then this is a lovely point to press. If you have insomnia, so restless conditions, again, this is a lovely point to press. It also just opens up physically the shoulder joint. So it's a good one for when you're feeling a state of anxiety, which a lot of people are at the moment. Anxiety shortens the breath. It forces the breath into the upper part of your chest, which in turn makes you feel more anxious. So calming the mind, calming the heart space, and creating physical space so that you can breathe. Last one. Releasing both hands down to the side, close the eyes for a moment, and just notice if the shoulders feel different. And then come to the other side. So pressing deeply into that armpit crevice, the deepest, darkest space. Once you've found it, lifting that left arm up, Take a breath in, and then exhale over to the other side. Deep breaths in, deep breaths out. So maybe you could focus on the heart space here, closing the eyes, taking the attention either to the point that you're pressing, so that's directing the flow of chi, or you could take the mind to the center of the heart. Breathing deep into the heart space is a great way to release anxiety and stress. If you ever find yourself sitting at your desk feeling really stressed out, try closing the eyes and just focusing on the heart space. Sometimes, again, the breath can be quite intangible, quite difficult to focus on. So that's why practicing yoga is a great way to focus the mind. Two more rounds. Keep pressing into heart one, that pressure point in the armpit. Keep breathing deep. And then release. Roll the shoulders back. Make some space for the front of the chest to breathe. And then inhale, take the hands up to the sky. Interlace your fingers, take the palms up high. And then again, inhale to stretch through the sides of the body. Exhale, releasing the hands behind you, interlace your fingers, drop the chin slightly, and then inhale to stretch your heart up, taking the hands behind you. Exhale to round the back, bringing the hands in front of you, looking towards your navel, and then inhale, taking the hands up towards the sky. 
exhale to release. Again, the chin comes slightly down, the hands interlace behind your back. Inhale to lift your heart, stretching through the front of the chest. Exhale, round the back, looking down. Go at the flow of your own breath. And then inhale, stretching up once again. Let's do this one more time. Exhale down, interlace the hands behind you, round the back. Inhale to lift the heart center, stretching the space between the intercostals. Exhale to round. Inhale to lift. Exhale, take the hands down to the ground. Finding large intestine four on the right hand once again. So this is an amazing point for any stagnation in the upper body, especially the head and the face. I'll explain more once we've found it. So you can run your finger along the second finger, along that metacarpal bone, all the way into the squidgy bit between your thumb and your second finger. So it's often a bit sore here anyway, because we use the thumb so much. I'll just come a bit closer so that you can see what I'm pointing at here. So again, find a tender place. You can squish around that area. And then see what it's like to press your thumb up towards this metacarpal bone. So up towards the bone of the second finger, in between the thumb and the second finger you should find a slightly sore spot. It's usually sore on most people. Once you've found it, press into it, but more importantly, breathe into it. So by that I mean just breathe and focus on this point. And then lift your hands up to the sky. Inhale to lift your hands a bit higher. Keep pressing into large intestine four. And then exhale over to the left side. As you inhale, make a bit more length along the spine so that you're not dumping all the weight down into that left side. And then as you exhale, come a bit deeper. Don't dump so deep that you can't breathe. Keep pressing into large intestine four. So this is a wonderful point for conditions of the head and face. It's great if you have headaches or migraines or dizziness, tinnitus, toothache, any kind of pain in the head in general. Try it next time you have a headache, it really works. It helps to release stagnation in the large intestine, the physical tract, as well as the energetic flow. So it helps to release and move blood and chi in the body, gets things moving. Last breath. And then release. Take the hands down. Find the point on the other side. So all of these points are on both sides of the body. Large intestine four on the left hand. Once you've found it, lift your hands back up to the sky. Stretch up tall. And then come over to the right side. So you're inhaling to make space along the length of the spine, making space not just in this left side of the body, but also the right, so that you can breathe evenly through the lungs. Keep pressing into the point. Again, if it helps to close your eyes so that you can focus on what you're doing, then do. Don't take the shoulders up to the ears. They don't need to lift you. See if you can relax them down. Using your breath to guide you into the length through the spine. The exhalation to drop you deeper into the stretch. Last breath. And then release. Take the hands out in front of you. Come into your tabletop position. So the hands are underneath the shoulders, the knees behind the wrists, the feet behind the knees. And look down at your hands, make sure there's space between your fingers. Coming into cat-cow to start to open up the spine. Drop your belly down, lift your heart, roll your shoulders back, take a breath in. As you exhale, we round the back. So tucking your imaginary tail in between your legs, looking towards your navel. And then inhaling to really drop the weight of your belly down. Make space between your collarbones so that you can lift the heart and breathe in. Exhale to round. So again, go with the flow of your breath. If your breath is shorter or deeper than I'm dictating, 
Work with your breath rather than mine. We all have different lung capacities. Moving with the rhythm of your breath, again, you can close the eyes if that helps you to focus inwards, allowing the breath to guide the movement of your physical body. So this time as we exhale, we're going to practice lion's breath, a detoxifying breath. So we stick the tongue out as we exhale and we breathe out of the mouth. Breathe in through the nose if you're able to. Breathe out of the mouth. Stick the tongue out. Inhale. Exhale. Keep going. Focusing on the exhalation helps us to create space to breathe in deep. So as an asthmatic growing up, I have had a lot of experience of that panicked breath that you get when you have an asthma attack. We tend to focus a lot on breathing in, especially when we're feeling panicky and anxious, and that makes us hyperventilate, which makes the condition much worse. So focusing on the exhalation and really making sure all of the breath is released from the lungs creates space so that you can take a deeper breath in. It's a really simple concept, but one that works magic. Mm. So focusing on the exhalation through your lion's breath for three more rounds, really forcing all of the breath out of the mouth. <sighs> Breathing in. And out. <sighs> Last round. And then coming back to centre. Tuck your toes, lift your knees, take your hips up to the sky, Adam Kushkanasana, downward facing dog. Stretch up through the back line of your body, make some space for the back of your body to breathe. So pressing the heels towards the ground, maybe pedalling them out. Take your tail right up to the sky, wriggle your bum, and then draw your thighs in towards your belly. You can roll your inner elbows forwards and drop your shoulders down your back to make space for the back and the front of the chest to breathe. Let your head be heavy. Take another breath in and lift your hips as high as they'll go. As you exhale, feel the force of gravity drawing your heels towards the earth. Looking forwards, step your feet up behind your wrists so the feet are hip distance apart. And then see what it's like to take your hands, interlace your fingers behind your back. And then as you drop into a forward fold, Uttanasana, your hands can lift up towards the sky. If that's challenging, if that's really difficult, if your shoulders are very tight, you can take something in between your hands so there's a bit more space for the shoulder joint. Wherever you are, let your head hang heavily. This is not about a massive hamstring stretch. So bend the knees as deeply as you need, especially if it's first thing in the morning and your back feels a bit tight. And then breathe. Goes without saying. Last breath. Gently drop your hands back down towards the ground. Press into your feet and roll yourself up vertebra by vertebra, coming up slow, feeling the stability through your feet, pressing into the ground beneath you. When you stand tall, roll your shoulders back and we'll come into another detoxifying twist. So take your feet about hip distance apart, spread your toes out, making space between them, and then allow there to be a micro bend in your knees. We're going to come into a twist, but seeing if we can keep the knees facing forwards. So allow your arms to be really floppy. Keep your eyes open to prevent dizziness. And then twisting from the waist, so it might be that your knees turn slightly, that's okay. But just see if you can keep the integrity of the legs. 
drawing down into the earth to give you some foundational support as you twist. So the arms are heavy. You're making space between the shoulder blades and your spine, that area of the body that often gets really tense when you really want a massage, which none of us can get at the moment. The eyes are open, the spine is tall, and you're twisting as fast, as hard, or as slow and gentle as you like. If you have children, this is an amazing uh, activity to give them when they're feeling really hyper. It helps to draw the chi down if it's got stuck in the upper body. So it just helps with the smooth flow of chi. So if your children are feeling manic, or if you're feeling manic, or feeling stressed out or angry, again, this is a great one for emotional PMT conditions, keep your feet firmly rooted to the ground and twist. See what happens. Take it a bit deeper if you can. Make sure you're still breathing. This is a, a Qigong exercise. Something that we practice before we give our Shiatsu treatments in order to help with the smooth flow of chi so that we can help our, our clients, our patients. Last few breaths. And then slowly coming back to stillness. So I recommend that as a practice for five to 10 minutes a day to help with emotional issues and to help with the breath. We'll just practice a short one today. And then when you come back to stillness, if you don't feel dizzy, close the eyes, press into the feet, and just notice what you notice about the body. Maybe you can feel some tingling sensations around the upper chest, around the arms. How does this affect the breath? Last breath here. and then opening the eyes. We'll find the lung meridian and the large intestine meridian using a Japanese tapping method called Do-in. So find the lung one point. This is a wonderful point for opening up the chest, lung one and lung two. So you can find these by lifting your right arm and finding the collarbone. And there's a dip just beneath the collarbone. Press into that dip. Again, it might feel a little bit sore, or tender, you can press your fingers into that space and then drop the arm down and then take your fingers and walk them over the muscle that's just beneath the dip. And again, that should feel perhaps a little bit tender. So pressing the fingers into those two spaces, lung one and lung two. These are wonderful points for releasing stagnation in the chest. They've been really useful to me since I stopped taking my asthma medication and have tried to work with my condition um, through holistic health without steroids. It really helps to release any tightness in the chest if you have a cough or phlegm. So medicine is important. So lots of people need it. I've managed in my older years to stop using it, uh, partly through age, partly through my yoga practice. Finding it on the other side. So again, lift the arm. It might feel, feel a bit easier to find that dip beneath the collarbone. I'll come a bit closer again so you can see. And then pressing into that dip and then take the fingers on top of the muscle just below, relax the arm. And you can just pad the fingertips around that whole area. If you're not feeling much going on, then just give yourself a bit of a massage around that area. For me, it feels really tender. Breathe into the space that you're pressing into. So when we practice shiatsu, we don't just kind of press our fingers or we don't just stick the needles in an acupuncture without thinking about it. We direct the flow of chi, the attention of the mind, into the place that we're uh, trying to activate or relax. So now you've found the greatest, or I think, the most useful points on the lung channel. Again, great for stagnation, cough, colds, releasing the stagnant chi of the chest. 
Let's do this dough in practice. So it's a kind of pummeling more than a tapping. You don't have to go really hard though. You make a loose fist and you start to tap or whack over the front of the chest. Lung one and lung two, invigorating the chi of the chest. Take the arm out to the side and then start to tap all the way down the top inside edge of the arm. The top inside edge of the arm. Down towards the elbow crease, towards the thumb. So that's your direction of flow. The lung channel starts at the chest, starts in the lungs, and it works all the way down to the thumb. So tapping down to the thumb where there's some great points from the wrist crease to the tip of the thumb. And then come over to the index finger, that's where the large intestine, the energetic pair of the lung, begins. You can tap up to the outer top edge of the arm. So where the darker flesh meets the lighter on my arm, up towards the top of the shoulder, which you can give a good old pummel. That's where we always have a lot of stagnation in the upper trapezius muscle. That's where we hold a lot of our stress. Come over to the other side. Again, loose fist. Find that lung one and lung two point. This helps to release the stagnation around the respiratory system and the large intestine is part of that, not part of the respiratory system, but part of the energetic system of the lung from a five element Chinese perspective. Take the hands all the way down towards the thumb, so the top inside corner of the arm to the thumb. When the lung is out of balance from a five element perspective, there is grief. And it kind of makes sense if you think about it. When you can't let go, which is part of the process of breathing, you're trying to let go, you feel really sad. And we tend to close off the physical space of the lungs when we're feeling sad, coming to the top of the shoulder. Let's do that one more time on either side. So when you feel sad, you tend to sort of have this feeling rounding yourself forward, closing off the capacity for the breath. We're doing the opposite with this go in. We're invigorating the energetic channel. We're encouraging the free flow of chi through the meridian pathways. And if chi is just not your thing, then we're invigorating the arms and the chest. Again, keeping an open mind and feeling the benefits of the practice. Last side, last tap. Down to the thumb, up the second finger, to the top of the shoulder. And then let's take that dough in practice around the chest. So if you have breasts, obviously avoiding that area, taking the pummeling to the side of the chest. Again, you can go as deep into this as you like. And then let's take the hands down the back of the legs. So work into the glutes, they always need a bit of pummeling, a bit of massage. And then come down the back of the legs. So this is where the lung channel continues from a shiatsu perspective. So this is not part of traditional Chinese medicine, this is Japanese medicine now, we get more meridians. All the way down to the ankles and then come back up again. Round the ribcage. Back to that lung space, give yourself a pummel, make a noise, no one can hear you. And then release. Give yourself a shake, shake it out. Notice what you notice. Maybe just a tingling sensation, maybe you feel a bit more invigorated. And then come to the front of your mat. We're going to come back into that stretch. So again, if you needed something between your hands, take it now. Otherwise, interlace your fingers. And then extend your index finger, your second finger, and your thumb out, and press into the tips of them. So remember that's where the lung channel ended and the large intestine channel began. So pressing the tips of the fingers together, the feet are hip distance apart, micro bend in the knee or a big bend if you've got a sore back, and then forward fold. The head is heavy, so give it a shake, yes, no. 
The hands extend up. Close the eyes for a moment, unless you feel dizzy. So you found the lung and large intestine meridians just then in your dough in practice, in your tapping. You're stretching out the whole of those meridian pathways in this particular stretch, and you can feel it all the way down the back of the legs, all the way along the length of the arms, the chest, and the actual organ itself, the space for the organ to breathe. So breathe deep. Letting all of the air out, allowing yourself to let go so that you can take in the new. How could we possibly move forward with our life if we don't shed the old? Last breath. Releasing the hands down to the ground, so bend the knees as much as you need to do that. Take a breath in and take the hands all the way up to the sky. Open up the heart. Take the arms all the way back. Maybe a gentle back bend. Exhale all the way back down, hands to the ground. Inhale to lift halfway up, belly parallel to the earth, fingertips brushing on the floor or the shins. Exhale, hands plant, step into our only plank of the practice. Take another breath here and press your heels towards the earth, finding length through the front and the back of the body. And then exhale the knees, chest and chin down to the ground. Untuck the toes. Inhale, lift into a cobra. You don't have to come too high. We're going to stay here for five breaths. So if you come too high, just drop a bit low. Press the tops of your feet into the mat and breathe into the space around the front of the chest by making space between your collarbones and feeling the space that you can build between your intercostals, so between the ribs. Maybe gently looking up, releasing from contraction. If you feel contracted, release a bit lower. One more breath. And then exhale, downward facing dog. Give your bum a little bit of a shake out. Make some space in the back line of your body. And then looking forwards, walk the hands up to the top of the mat and come to sit on your sitting bones, coming back into another twist. So extend your left leg out long and bend your right knee. Take the sole of your right foot down to the ground. If you can, take the foot to the outside of your left leg. If your bum comes off the ground when you do that, then just put the foot to the inside of the leg. We're coming into a twist, wrapping over to the right. So wrap your left elbow on top of your right knee, and then see again if you can find lung one and two. So pressing into that space just beneath the collarbone. Then lifting your right hand high, Drop it down behind you. If you need to, take a book. If your arms aren't long enough to touch the floor, then just take a prop, keep it easy. Keep that left foot flexed so that you've got the integrity of the pose from the base, allowing you to lift a bit taller and rotate a little bit further. Keep breathing into this pressure point. So again, you can close the eyes to help you focus. We're opening up the space around the lungs. And at the same time, we're coming into a twist, which naturally detoxifies the body. So the body is detoxifying itself the whole time, every time we breathe. The diaphragm moves down, creating space in the lungs to take a breath in. And that pushes and squeezes on the internal organs. When we're in a twist, we're just aiding that process, creating more of a squeeze. So breathing deep into your twist, detoxifying the digestive tract and creating space for you to breathe, the lung and the large intestine working as an energetic pair. Three more breaths. Finding space and length as you breathe in, twisting deeper as you breathe out. And then release. Coming to the other side, 
extend your right leg out, bend your left knee, take the foot to the outside or keep it inside. And then wrap your left elbow on top of that left, sorry, your right elbow on top of that left knee and find your lung points again. So just padding around beneath that dip underneath the collarbone. Extend your left hand high, take it behind you and then twist to look over to the left. Notice what's going on with that right foot. Has it got a bit floppy? See if you can flex the toes so that you have the integrity, the foundation of the lower part of the body. So if you feel the force of gravity drawing the lower part of the body down, you can work against the force of gravity just using the breath to lift up. So feel the lift in the spine as you breathe in. And as you exhale, you might find a bit more space between the vertebra to twist deeper. Five more breaths, wherever you've got to. Finding length as you breathe in. Finding twist as you breathe out. When you finish your fifth round of breath, release yourself back to centre. Take your hands behind you, release the legs out long. Your fingers are facing forwards. Take the soles of the feet down to the ground. As you breathe in, draw the thighs in towards the belly. You'll have to engage your core muscles to do this. Squeeze yourself into a ball. As you breathe out, like you're forcing the stagnant air out of the body, kicking it away, Push the feet forward and lean back. Inhale to squeeze yourself into a ball. Exhale, force yourself out. <sighs> Breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. <sighs> in through the nose, out through the mouth. <sighs> Five more. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Make sure all of the stagnant air has released from the mouth before you draw in. This is, again, great for the digestive system, great for building core strength, and great for the breath, if you focus on your breath. One more for luck. And then come back to your seat. <coughs> See, a bit of movement of stagnant lung chi, Good indication of that is a bit of a cough. So coughing is good. So find a comfortable seat. Again, you can sit up on anything that you like to allow you to be comfortable. We'll find the beginning of the large intestine meridian. So that is right to the outside corners of the nose. I'll come closer so that you can see. So those little dips to the lower corners of your nostrils, you should find maybe well, it's almost like a dip, like a little hole. This one for me doesn't feel particularly tender, so it may or may not for you. But as we hold these points, these large intestine one points for a bit longer, you might start to feel pressure building. So take your index fingers onto these points, the dips, and then allow the weight of your head to drop down onto the support of your fingers. You don't have to force the fingers into the dips, into the points. You can allow the weight of the head to drop down, taking the pressure off while putting the pressure on. So these large intestine one points are great for immunity. They help again to clear stagnation chi from the head. They help to clear the nasal passages, so if you have a cold or congestion in the nasal passages, then this, these are great points to press. If you couldn't breathe through your nose at the beginning of the practice, can you now? Noticing if there's been any change. Last 
last breath here. Maybe you can start to feel that pressure building up. It feels slightly different than just physical pressure. Maybe there's a buzzing. That doesn't have to be. Again, this is just something that you can start to build awareness, awareness of as you practice working with chi. And then release. Can you breathe through your nose? If you can't, don't worry. We're going to do a pranayama technique that involves breathing through the nose, but if it's not available to you to breathe through both nostrils, just breathe through the mouth. Taking the right hand, I'm not mirroring you, take your second and third finger to the third eye, so that's the space in between the eyebrows. There's a great pressure point here, great for calming the mind. With your left hand, just turn the palm to face up so the shoulder can be relaxed. And then closing off your right nostril with your thumb, take a breath in through your left. Close both nostrils off, so the fourth finger and the thumb close the nostrils. And then opening up that right nostril, exhale, so pressing into the left. So you inhale through the right nostril, the thumb lifted. You hold both nostrils closed. And then exhale through the left nostril, release your fourth finger. Let's inhale through that same nostril. Close off both. Exhale out of the right. Inhale through that same nostril, through the right. Close off both nostrils. And exhale through the left. Inhale through the left, closing both nostrils, exhale through the right. Inhale through the right, same nostril, closing off both nostrils, exhale through the left. Inhale through the same nostril, closing off both. Exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Close. Exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Close. Exhale through the right. So this is how the pranayama works. Take a moment just to release your hands back down to the knees. Turn both palms up and close the eyes. We'll practice this again, but I just want you to notice what's happened to the body as you practice. If this is the first time you've done the pranayama, pranayama is a breathing exercise that we use in yoga. There's lots of them. It might be that you start to contract with the, with the focus of the breath. So notice if your shoulders round, Remember, this is the feeling of the lung meridian being closed off. You're literally closing off the energetic circuit of the lung, as well as the physical space. This creates sadness. So open up the chest, roll the sh shoulders back, and keep the shoulders relaxed throughout your practice. We are balancing out the energy on both sides of the body, and we're drawing the energy into the center of the body through this breathing practice. Alongside this, we're helping to calm and focus the mind through meditation, a focus on the breath. So this is a wonderful practice for anxiety and stress. It's difficult to remember to practice breathing exercises when you're really stressed out, but I highly recommend it. So let's go again, closing the eyes so that you can focus in. The second and third fingers press against your third eye. Your thumb closes off your right nostril. Breathe in through the left. Relax the shoulders. Close off both nostrils. And exhale through the right. Inhale through that right nostril. Close off both. Exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Close. Exhale through the right. Inhale 
Inhale through the right. Close. Exhale through the left. Keep going with your own breath. You're inhaling through the same. You're exhaling through the opposite. The shoulders are relaxed. The mind is focused. Breathing deep into the lower belly space. So if it helps, you could take your left hand onto your lower belly, feeling it move as you breathe in deep. Allowing all of the breath to release as you exhale, letting go of what you no longer need. Making space to bring in the new vitality, fresh chi. Is there something in your life that you really don't need anymore that's holding you back? It's keeping you stuck or stagnant. Maybe a person, it may be a job, it may be clutter in your house. It doesn't have to be a big, deep issue. Can you just visualize for the next few rounds of breath, blowing out whatever doesn't serve you, making space to bring in the new. What would your life look like if you could just make a bit more space for something new? Last few rounds, at your own pace. If visualization works well for you, then keeping that focus. Otherwise, just feeling the movement of the breath in and out of the nostrils. Make this your last round. Finishing with a sigh and exhalation. And then release both hands down to your knees, palms face up. Spine is tall, crown of the head floats. Space between the collarbones. Noticing what you notice. to lie down, Shavasana, which is the supportive pose of our yoga practice. Lying on your back, take any support that you need, a pillow under the knees, a pillow behind the head. As you lie in Shavasana, your palms are turned up. This just creates space for the lungs to breathe. Your belly is completely relaxed. This creates space for the digestive system to flow. Allow yourself to settle into the support of the earth, lying on your back, and feeling the back of your body connected to the ground. Noticing if anything from the class today resonates with you. Are you holding on to grief? Are you very anxious and stressed? Do you find it difficult to breathe? Chinese medicine is wonderful, or traditional Chinese medicine is wonderful, in my opinion, because it's a holistic healthcare practice. It doesn't compartmentalize everything. Western medicine is wonderful in its own ways, but combining these two traditions together is a great way to ensure the balance of your health. We can work with the physical body to aid the support of the mental health, we can work with the mind in order to allow for spiritual health. So you can work on any level that you like, whatever resonates with you at the time, and you'll be having an impact on the rest of the body. So feeling the fruits of your practice, marinating in your practice as you lie 
on your back and breathe. Has the breath changed? Has the feeling in the body changed? Has the state of your mind changed? mind has wandered, gently bring it back into your body. Take your hands onto your lower belly and take a deep breath in, feeling the belly barrel on all sides. Sigh out the exhalation through the mouth, letting the whole body flop as you sigh. Two more times, deep breath in through the nose, Sighing breath out of the mouth. Once more. And then bending the knees so that you can roll onto the left side. Take a moment lying on your left side. This is the side that we lie on to aid digestion. And then gently bring 